Hello, mga pamangkins. I miss you guys. I hope you're all doing okay. I hope you've been taking care of yourself, you know, eating right and exercising and getting good sleep and getting sunshine, you know, all of that great stuff. What? No? No? Not at all? Okay, the important thing is that I'm here and you're here and you're watching. We're together. That's all that matters. I am truly sorry for being away for so long and I know that as a content creator that means that I suck but if there's one thing that I want you to always remember is that success begins with suck. In my defense it was 2020 the most epitomably execrable year in the 21st century thus far. It is all behind us now or at least you know I hope it is please God please let it be behind us now. Other than that I also had work, which is something that I still need to do because this channel isn't monetized yet. But on the other hand, we now have over 200 subscribers on this channel. That's right! Zero Fury X, we did it! No, actually you guys did it. Thank you for the subs fam. I'm gonna do my best to make content that is worth your time. I want to tell you guys a story. This is a story that I've been wanting to tell for so long. It's a story from a different time. A story from a different world. The world pre-pandemic, back in the days when children used to go to school and we used to go to work. At work! When we used to hang outside together and hug people, hug each other. Remember those days? It wasn't that long ago, that was basically just last year. This is the story of how I became an effing Disney princess. Oh yes, just like Maleficent and Yzma, who in my mind is the greatest Disney princess ever. Eat your heart out, Leia Salonga. So here's what happened. I was going out on my morning run, and then I saw this guy, and he had a bird perched on his hand and I thought that is the coolest thing I have ever seen. I went up to him and said, hey, is that your bird? And then the guy said, no, this is not my bird. We just met. So we talked for a little bit and then that bird flew straight to my hand. Oh, you landed on my phone. Are we meant to be friends? Hello, little friend. And then the guy said, you know, I think you should keep that bird. Then I was like, are you sure? Because it came to you first. And then the guy said, nah, I don't know how to take care of birds. I'm rarely at home because I do security here. You should take care of it. I'm taking you home, I guess. And so, that was basically it. I found myself with bird. If this bird stays with me on the one kilometer walk all the way home, then this is meant to be. And if not, well, it's not. Bye bye birdie. And it was at that point where I started to question reality because it felt like I was in some kind of narrative-based RPG and every person I encountered on the way home seemed like an NPC with like a blessing or a mission for me or some information that I need. On the way home with the new bird friend perched on my shoulder, I ran into a bunch of bicycling dudes and then they said, you know what, it's really, really fortuitous. It is good luck to be adopted by such a bird. You are a very lucky person. Further on, I passed by this machine shop and the owner of the machine shop noticed the bird on my shoulder. It turns out that he was a bird fancier and so he took me into his home. He set out some bird seed to feed my little friend because it looked like she hadn't eaten in several days. While she fed happily, the man gave me a crash course in the care and feeding of African lovebirds. Thank you, Richie. Before we left, he gave us a warning. He said, you know, that bird, that bird is an escape artist. He's gonna play it cool the whole time, but then when you let your guard down, she'll just leave. Further down, we met this lovely Lola, or grandmother. Her name was Helen, she was 83 years old, and she used to teach high school science. She blessed me and then instructed my bird friend to grant me good health, good luck, and great fortune. Thank you, Lola Helen. When I came home with a bird perched in my hands, it blew my family's minds. My family fell in love with my new little friend who I had decided to call Birdie, mainly because it was the first name that popped into my head. It's also the title of an 80s film that starred Matthew Modine and Nicolas Cage. 
also the name of an English singer-songwriter who I really quite liked. But I digress. She was really fascinated by our dog, Shomai. She would constantly be hounding Shomai, and Shomai doesn't really like that. Shomai also didn't like that we were giving her all this attention, and so she became extra clingy. Hence, all these Disney princess pictures of me. Naturally, I made a whole bunch of social media posts about it. Of course, it's amazing. Why wouldn't I? I'm gonna try to record some bird sounds. Say bye bye. It got a lot of likes and comments, but my favorite comment came from a friend who called me Frank Aldana, you magical bastard. Magical bastard. That is a title that I would wear with pride. And I was just about to set up the Facebook page for the Society of Magical Bastards, but then, just like that, it was over. Richie was right. She really was an escape artist. You know that meme with the, the raccoon who had this piece of food and he tried to wash it, but then that piece of food is made of cotton candy and so it dissolved in the water and it disappeared and he was confused. Where is it? What happened to it? You know? At that moment, I was that raccoon. Deep down inside, I knew that she wasn't going to be with us for very long. Or it could be that I was just hedging my expectations so that it wouldn't hurt so much. But, uh still did. I even went to my neighbors to ask them, hey, have you seen this bird? And of course, you know, they haven't. I would also play recordings I've made of Birdie. Maybe it would call her back home. Something, something, anything. But no, that, that it doesn't work like that. And I uh, never saw her again. It's corny, but it's true what they say that you don't really know what you have until you've lost it. Having had Birdie in our lives, we became acutely aware of the local birds around us. We took note of where birds nested, where they liked to hang out, the times of day when they were most active. We took note of all of these things, and without really being aware of it, we had become bird people. And then one day, my eldest came home with a new friend. She ended up buying a bird that was the spitting image of the one that we had just lost. Her bird's name was Cotton. In terms of her personality, Cotton was nothing like Birdie. She's very aggressive and she's kind of an asshole. I didn't realize that it was possible for birds to be psychotic until I met Cotton. Cotton bites and when she bites, she bites down really hard and grinds her beak. We often joke that she's not really a love bird because she's more of a hate bird. The one thing that she does have in common with Birdie is this obsession with our dog Shomai. She's constantly hounding Shomai everywhere she goes. Understandably, Shomai is very wary of Cotton, the psychotic little bird. I don't know how she managed to do this, but Cotton attacked a mouse. Cotton was inside her cage, and she managed to attack a mouse that was outside her cage. We never realized that mice could scream that loud. Cotton is our little murder machine, but you know what? We love her just the same. We also set up a feeder outside the house for the local birds. At first, there was just a few of them coming in to visit, but then soon, we had this entire gang of birds. They hang around, but they wait for the rest of their friends to arrive. And then, when the whole gang is complete, that's the only time that they will swoop down and eat together. It's not the same as being magically attracted to delightful woodland creatures that fawn over you, but it's still pretty awesome, and I'm glad it happened. So, thank you, Birdie. I hope that wherever you are, that you are safe, and that you're cared for, and well-fed, and loved wastefully. I hope that you are somewhere out there bringing happiness to some other lucky human being. You magical bastard. I cannot believe
this, there's a bird on my foot. <laughs> what are you doing? Can I adopt you? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my god. <laughs> still there you made it all the way to the end thanks fam next episode i will be bringing back tech teens the long overdue and much ballyhooed ultimate punk and livelihood showcase build thank you for watching and feel free to fondle that like button and leave us some love in the comment section so ingat kayo take care of yourselves and love you